Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And this week we're going to continue reviewing a uh, series of videos from Tea Time with uh, Lindsay Holiday. So this is going to be on her Queens and Consorts of England series. So we're going to be looking at the Normans. So this is going to be looking at the Queens and Consorts of Conquests, Consorts of the Norman Kings, i.e. the uh, direct relations to William of Normandy. So this one covers um, Matilda of Flanders, Matilda of Scotland, um, and Zilla of Louvain. I'm probably mispronouncing that. She does not. Uh, Matilda of Bonny. Again, these are French. Um, Geoffrey Plangent, who we get back to him. And then of course, Eleanor of Aquitaine, who's a little bit more famous. So that's who this covers. The next one obviously is going to be the Plangent, Plangent Queens. So, um, cause I believe Jeffrey, Jeffrey is actually married to Eleanor of Aquitaine at one point in time. So it's a very um, interesting video. This one is, let's see how long this is. Um, it actually shows me how long this one is. 15 minutes little this is under, short slightly shorter than the next one i think after this they start getting longer um yeah because the next one's like 23 minutes and then it gets close to a half an hour by the end so this is a very interesting um video similar to the first one you're covering the various queens in this case joffrey was a consort of um a dowager um queen so because she her husband died she did however have sons and there was all sorts of battling going on <laughs> thus the whole Plagent era. Um, leave more of her children in comparison. Um, she's actually like the grandmother of these things. So it's very very interesting again you see the mechanism you see how beautiful these young one ones how old they are some of them are very young. Um, one thing to say is this is an area of history that I love so I study this a lot. It's unusual in the general population to marry a 13 year old to a 45 year old man. This is not normal in the gen general uh, um, population. They do this in royalty because again, they're trying to make alliances. So it, whether or not they're having children that age, nobody knows. But yes, they marry them off or they align them too because it's, it's an exchange for alliances. In their general population, they don't really do that, not that young. Uh, women are not typically getting married um, until they're like, 18, 18, 19 at the youngest, and then the men are in their early 20s. That's the norm for the general population. That's not the nobility who are trying to make connections and treaties. So, but again, this is very, very interesting because you see some more of the mechanisms here. You see, she talks a lot about Eleanor of Aquitaine who does some interesting stuff and, you know, ends up in prisons and pissing people off and all sorts of interesting things. Um, and how educated some of these, a lot of these women were. They were not, they were very educated. They went to school normally with nuns, um, with the church and learned a wide variety of things. They were learned languages. Um, they obviously, some of them were very pious as would probable of the time. And some of them were great strategists. I mean, these women, <laughs> this was their livelihood, even though they sometimes had very little power. Sometimes they were power hungry. Uh, so it is very interesting to look at this section of the Norman Kings. You do still see, uh, obviously, the Robin Hood legends of both King John and his brother, uh, King Richard of Lionheart. I believe his mother chases him around trying to get him to get married because, again, he's off crusading incessantly. And no, he's not really all that smart. <laughs> Richard of Lionheart is interesting. I may see if I can find some more interesting stuff on him. He's an interesting character, as is John, who's, again, very, very arrogant, kind of spoiled. Uh, neither, one, neither one of them, I believe, actually had legitimate or living children, um, which is, again, issues. So, issues <laughs> with the line of the throne. So, it's, it's interesting. Again, this is not very long. This is only about a 15-minute video. It's a very good um, overview. So, if you're studying this period of history, it's interesting to look at the queens and again, the consorts, because they had different roles to play besides just, you know, the kings and what they were doing, because their wives and their mothers had some decent influence, particularly if their fathers died when they were young and mommy decides to take over and is power hungry <laughs> and has issues. 
So, which I think Eleanor Aquatine was. Um, again, issues. So, again, it, it's kind of fun to look at these and what, what's going on. And if you're covering this period of history, um, you're covering the history of England. Again, at this point, why there are certain parts of France that's owned they don't have control of Scotland. They do not have. The, we don't have. We haven't reached the point of they were controlling of uh, Wales yet. So this is just this the the three kingdoms of United England. Um, we'll get there. She covers everything. I, this goes all the way to modern times, and the videos start getting longer. I think this is the shortest of them, possibly because there's not as much information. So um, the previous one was only 16 minutes. So the further back you go, the less information you have. So it's a, it's a very interesting uh, video. I like this um, presenter. She presents quite a bit of uh, good information, so I will link below. She unfortunately doesn't really link, it, link her sources, um, but again, it gives you a decent overview. I have a cranky cat in my lap. <laughs> so, but it, it's a good introduction, and if you're looking at British history, she does, she's engaging to watch. So if you're looking at those histories, try to move a irritated cat who's slipping off my lap. Uh, obligated, I'm being bit to death. <laughs> Kendra! Like, don't show me on camera. I am a vicious, very old cat. Cause Kendra. Uh, she's almost 13 as of the shooting. This is, um, by the time you guys see this, she'll be closing in on 14 if we're still around getting out of the lap. So again, really good video. Um, not very long, great introduction. I enjoy this presenter. Otherwise I wouldn't be reviewing her. So if you like what you see, be, check her, be sure to check out the rest of the channel. I am covering the rest of her consort series. I may cover her um, later. These are, if you're watching these as they come out, they're balancing off the Princess Diaries series, uh, which is fun and fluff, but it's still fluff. <laughs> so I'm throwing some education stuff. And there's not really a lot of interesting princess films. Uh, so we're covering these. And so these are very, very interesting. So be sure to check out the rest of the channel. I have a wide variety of book series. I do some travel stuff. I do some standalone stuff. I do more severe, uh, not some more severe, but more, I do heavier stuff. I also do children's books. So I have a wide variety of stuff available along with films. Some of it's darker, um, some of it's heavier, some of it's more historic, some of it's more educational. I also do some travel stuff, um, some more educational travel stuff, like some of the local attractions, kind of where we live or where we travel. Um, as well just kind of reviews of those as well as as we move on and my daughter who as of the shooting is two and a half by the time you guys see this will be closer to three and a half so we'll be adding more secular homeschooling stuff if i start doing curriculums and stuff i'll definitely review those and kind of other educational games and things as again as we utilize them